More uncertainty in Lebanon. After nearly two weeks of popular protests, Prime Minister Saad Hariri has resigned. But some protesters say they'll remain on the streets until all their demands are met. So what happens next and what would another power vacuum mean? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. It was one of the main demands of Lebanon's protest movement, the resignation of the prime minister and his cabinet. Well, after nearly two weeks of mass protests over corruption and economic hardship, Saad Hariri has been forced to step down. He handed his resignation to President Michel Aoun, who's accepted it and has now tasked Hariri to lead a caretaker government. But many protesters say this is not enough and are demanding the president also resign and parliamentary elections be held. There is concern that this could lead to a power vacuum in Lebanon. Lots to talk about with our guests in just a moment, but first, this report from Al Jazeera's Stephanie Decker in Beirut. It is day 14, two weeks, and a significant win for the protesters in the form of the resignation of Prime Minister Saad Hadidi and, in effect, the government. Uh, but many questions remain and challenges remain. We are now at a political crisis. Yes, there has been some easing of the situation on the ground when it comes to the opening of the main roads. This is something they've been putting a lot of pressure on the government, a lot of pressure also on the people wanting to move around the capital and this country. Those roads that protesters have closed have been reopened. We're also hearing that schools and banks are due uh, to reopen. But there are big question marks when it comes to the political situation uh, of this country. Uh, what is the transitional government going to look like? The protesters want a government at cabinet made up of technocrats, of people not affiliated to any of the political parties. But the people now in consultations with the president are going to be people affiliated, heads of these parties that the protesters are against. A, are they going to be able to agree on anything? We know there are discrepancies, there are disagreements among the political parties. And are the protesters going to agree on what they come up with? There are major challenges ahead. Protesters also will tell you that they're going to remain in the streets until the entire higher government resigns, that the names change. So I think at the moment, difficult times ahead for Lebanon, challenging times ahead for Lebanon, and unpredictable times ahead for Lebanon. Stephanie Decker in Beirut for Inside Story. Now, Lebanon has a very complex system of governance that goes back to the country's independence from France in 1943. It's a sectarian political system representing all religious groups, and it was reinforced in the Taif Accord that ended Lebanon's 15-year civil war in 1990. The top positions are held by the three largest sects. The president is always a Maronite Christian, the prime minister a Sunni Muslim, and the speaker of parliament a Shia Muslim. The number of seats in parliament is equally split between Christians and Muslims and proportionally divided among the country's 18 sects. The Iranian-backed Shia group Hezbollah and its allies hold the majority of seats in the current parliament, and the group also has considerable military power. The coalition government that resigned on Monday took nine months to form following a deadlock over ministerial positions. Well, let's introduce our panel now for today's Inside Story. In Beirut, Omar Nashabi, a political analyst and former advisor on human rights at the Ministry of Interior in Lebanon. In London, Bilal Maleb, a researcher at the Institute of Global Affairs at the London School of Economics. And also in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, Naim Salem, professor of international affairs and diplomacy at Notre Dame University. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Thank you for being with us. Naim Salem in Beirut, let me start Start with you. Saad Haribi now tasked with leading a caretaker government with limited powers. Does this ease the crisis a little bit or does it complicate things further? Well, on the face of it, it has eased the, the, the tension. It has uh, led to the majority, absolute majority of demonstrators to get, to get off the streets all over Lebanon. Uh, uh, most of the roads have been opened over the past uh, a few hours since early, early morning. And this has allowed the movement, the transportation, and uh, businesses to uh, reopen 
uh, their doors uh, as of uh, today. And tomorrow, uh, all institutions in the country and all businesses will be open once again after two weeks of total uh, shut off, total uh, close down. So now the uh, president uh, 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 is now to conduct consultation with parliament members, which are constitutionally re required, to see whom do they want or whom do they prefer uh, to be the next uh, prime uh, minister. And based on those consultations, which are likely to be scheduled uh, tomorrow by the presidential palace, uh, the decision to uh, uh, put a, uh, uh, someone to uh, uh, form the new cabinet mm -hmm. will be de de decided or declared by the president. Uh, okay. The next few days uh, will uh, uh, clarify this whole issue on who will be the next prime minister. 80%, 70, 80% prime minister uh, Hariri may uh, uh, be the next prime minister, but mm -hmm. he has already now, uh, before I got into the studio, he has be, he uh, said that he is putting uh, 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 conditions such as uh, they don't want uh, in the new cabinet uh, uh, ministers who uh, are uh, 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 seen as uh, uh, confrontational or mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. Uh, and, and this uh, may, complicate, may complicate the situation. All right. Uh, Bilal Maleb, your thoughts. Some have suggested that Saad Hariri's move was a negotiating tactic. Um, who's the pressure on right now? And what are the possible scenarios here? Well, the pressure, in my opinion, is on the government and on the political uh, parties. They have tried different ways to, to scale down the protest with, to no avail. At the moment, it seems that the resignation of Saad Hariri has been well accepted in the street. It was seen as a, as a sort of win for the movement. The scenarios going forward are, I think, having a clear mandate for this government, mm -hmm. stating what the reforms are going to be and being very clear on how they're going to do them. On top of that, I think what's lacking at the moment, uh, apart from the shape of the government, whether it's technocrat or not, which ideally it should be technocrat, um, the, the substance in which it's going to, the, the, the manner in which it's going to tackle the, the reforms is of absolute essence. Right. Uh Omar Nashabe in Beirut, as uh, Naeem Salim has said, uh, the political party is now headed for consultations with the president. But these consultations will be with the same political establishment that the protesters on the streets these past few weeks have been criticizing. So you wonder, what's the point of it all? Exactly, exactly. I think, uh, I think what will happen is that uh, we will have uh, a government that is not very much different than the government that we had. Uh, I mean, there will be some changes, but these changes will only be, you know, small details. Uh, the problem, the people were uh, took to the streets and they were uh, screaming and shouting against the government in a movement that was called a revolution because they reject the whole political system. Mm -hmm. the, this system is based on, as, you, as the introduction of your show, uh, you know, showed, pointed out very clearly, this is a sectarian system. And, uh, you know, there's so much corruption in the country. And there's a failure of the government to deliver basic services to the, to the people. And people, uh, the, the reason for that is that people in the government are being appointed in the government because of their sectarian allegiance, not because of their capacity to deliver or their, their, their competence, you know, and that, and that is a major challenge and the people are angry. Now, right. I'm not saying the people did not present, I mean, the people who were striking did not present any alternative. They were just saying that they were angry, that the government fails to deliver and that corruption is widespread all over the country. Yeah. So what we're witnessing right now is that we're witnessing Yes, I'm sorry. I was going to just jump in. You talked about the sectarian in, system. Sorry? Yes, you talked about the sectarian system. But do you think that Lebanon can do away with this sectarian system that's been in place for, what, 40, 50 years now? What are the other alternatives if not the sectarian system yes. in a country that's so diverse yeah. when it comes to religions and so on? Yes, yes, I agree fully. But, you know, there are, you know, the majority of the people who took to the streets in the past 13 days are young people. This is a young generation coming out and saying that we cannot continue with this tradition system that has failed all along since the independence of this country to actually deliver. The services are uh, horrible. I mean, this is one of the most expensive countries in the world. We have uh, inflation that is 
you know, shocking. I mean, people are not really happy with the economic situation. They're not happy with the political representation. We, we just had, uh, you know, parliamentary elections uh, about a year ago. And, uh, you know, you had more than, let's say, the minimum numbers, more than 300, 400,000 people on the streets, and there was nobody to represent them. Mm. So that shows the failure of the electoral law that is also based on sectarian divisions and sectarian uh, div distribution of power. I mean, this is a distribution of power based on religious groups, and the new generation has had enough of that. The new generation in Lebanon, as I can see them, as I met them in the, in the protests, and I see them, they're against the whole system. They want a system that delivers basic services to the people. We, right. we don't have social security system that is in place. We don't have an, uh, an educational system. We have some serious challenges in this country, and the new generation is saying no to everything, to the whole political class, and is not presenting any alternatives. Right. Serious challenges, uh, Bilal Maleb. There's no doubt about that, uh, Bilal. Serious challenges. But how dangerous a moment is this for Lebanon, you think? Well, the danger is for the current situation to be misused by certain political parties in Lebanon. The, 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 the point I, I wish to make before I jump into this issue is that the movement towards a non-sectarian Lebanon needs to be an incremental one. It needs to be a phased, uh, a phased process to get us from the current status quo to the desired Lebanon. Shocks are usually not very well accepted by, by the masses, both those on the streets and those who are not. But at the same time, shocks can be also ridden along the waves uh, by certain political parties or certain infiltrators. Mm. Okay. Let so what I'm saying is that we're all for the movement towards uh, a non-sectarian Lebanon, and I think this is what we're all calling for. Let, oh, me, let gonna... me just bring in Naim Salem in Beirut. I wanted to bring you in on, on that point of uh, uh, the uh, political system in Lebanon, which is so complicated, but which has been in place now for decades. Do you think it can be changed in a country like Lebanon? A and in 2008, we remember, Hezbollah took full control after a similar crisis. Do you see such a scenario happening again? Can there be a purely... Uh, Hezbollah-backed government now? Well, if the situation goes into uh, a total deadlock, that may become a, a, a credible scenario or a probable scenario. I don't think, given the current circumstances, that, the, uh, that Hezbollah leadership is thinking in any way to take over uh, the country. It is not in their uh, interest, and they cannot manage the country if they decide to take it uh, uh, militarily over. Militarily, they can do that, but they polit politically, they cannot rule the country. So this is not uh, 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 an issue that is probable uh, to, to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, regarding the system, the system has been sectarian for a long time, and it is difficult to change it overnight. Uh, the first uh, step to change the system is to change the election law. This current uh, uh, election law, ba based on which the uh, parliamentary uh, uh, election were, took, pl uh, took place last year, uh, uh, basically do not allow for a non-sectarian uh, system to be uh, uh, applied. So the, as of now, there is no possibility that the law will be changed. So in the next uh, uh, period, after a new government is established, and depending on who will be, will be in charge of the new government, 70-80% uh, is going to, uh, as I said, to Mr. Uh, uh, Saad Hariri. Uh, uh, but the fundamental point, if we are to go into a non-sectarian system, you need to change the election law, the current uh, election law, and that remains to be seen. There are que big question marks on this issue. Okay. And uh, the, uh, General Aoun, General Aoun may go in that direction, and he may have majority uh, bringing together his own group, uh, Hezbollah, uh, Amal, and a few other allies, and they would uh, uh, have more than 70 uh, members of parliament giving vote of confidence for the uh, uh, new cabinet, a uh, new cabinet. But I don't think he is going in that direction. If okay. he uh, uh, is to form uh, a new government from uh, the March, the old March 14, uh, March uh, 8 uh, coalition in Lebanon, that will incur on Lebanon foreign uh, sanctions, particularly American sanctions. Indeed, because and Hezbollah Saudi is sanctions under U.S. sanctions. Emirati sanctions. Okay, Naim Salem, uh, both Omar and Bilal yes, say... Um, can I... 
Yes, just let me just bring Naim back into the conversation. Naim, both Omar and Bilal say you can't change the system overnight, the political system in Lebanon overnight. So how do you achieve the radical changes that the protesters are demanding? Uh, the fundamental change is that the first uh, building block in the uh, changes uh, and reform is to deal with corruption. Okay. Uh, and corruption now has been for 30 years in government. We need, first of all, the first step to get a cabinet that will address corruption at all levels uh, 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 in the administration of the authorities, from the Council of Ministers all the way to the various employees of uh, uh, on government. Okay. As of now, there is no will on the on uh, and no consensus on dealing with corruption because those who have been ruling the country for the past 30 uh, years they are part and parcel of this corruption okay. process. Okay, let's let's hear from Bilal now in in uh, London. Bilal, how do we how do we change things? How do we achieve the radical changes that the protesters have been demanding? Well, I would like to actually flip that uh, and say that we are on the verge of economic collapse, and the central question now is less on the on the on the on the structure of things, but more on what the reforms that the new government will, is going to deliver and what kind of mandate will this government have. The the form of the government is of course important for consensus, given that we this is the the status quo in Lebanon. We we function by consensus consensus politics. But at the same time, we must not ignore that there is a, a fiscal deficit of around 10 percent, uh, according to the IMF, and that there is a movement on the street that has put pressure on, on, the, on the government. So any failed steps going forward will not be met with, uh, with, with roses. The other thing to say is that once this has kicked off and the momentum it took uh, for the past 14 days, um, this will not stop. This will not stop very easily, which is, which is I think, a, a, a healthy symptom. So the, the protests will not, will not uh, actually stop at the moment. The okay. momentum is there. It's going to well, keep going. All right. But uh, it's important to note that there are three things that, are, that have been radically changed in people in the streets. One is political beliefs. One is individual preferences towards the political system, and three is social connections that have been formed in the protests. The three of these can catalyze the movement to keep going forward. And this is evidence that has been shown in Hong Kong and in other places that the, when, once the momentum is there, once people actually attend one protest, the likelihood of them attending again is significantly higher. All right. Omar so the pressure in, will keep going. All right. Omar in Beirut, uh, let's bring you back into the conversation. It took, we know, nine months for Hariri to form the government uh, that resigned, that handed its resignation on Monday. How long do you see this crisis lasting in Lebanon? And again, the same question I posed to the other guests. How do uh, we achieve the radical changes that the protesters have been demanding, if not changing the political system? Well, uh, well, it's uh, it's possible that it would take uh, also a long period of time to have a new government. It could take a long period of time to name a new prime minister. I think uh, yeah, the crisis remains. It's a it's a system that is going through uh, many difficulties. There is no consensus. There are various groups that are looking for their interests. Uh, there is no feeling of uh, national unity or any. Uh, really any political uh, political position that is uh, for the interests of the country as a whole. There are various sectarian groups and political groups calling for their own interests and the interests of their own sect or their own region or their own parties. Uh, and this, uh, this will lead to more challenges. The discussions will be over power sharing. I mean, how they're going to do power sharing based on sectarian principles. And that's what's going to take place. And this may take a long time to resolve. Uh, this is a system that is a total failure, and uh, uh, what we're doing now is some patchwork and trying to actually bring in a government that will also be a total failure. There's no, not much hope with the same system to actually have some substantial change. We can actually analyze this for hours for, and hours. Indeed. Uh, sure. I was going to ask you, 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 you mentioned the fact that this is obviously a very complicated situation that's not likely to be resolved anytime soon. Uh, and we know that the political dynamics uh, are complicated and they're not only internal, but also have regional implications. Uh, uh, there's a complex web of uh, allegiances that involves countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran. What would be the regional implications of a yes. power vacuum and a prolonged political crisis in Lebanon? 
Well, we had a power vacuum before. We had, uh, you know, in the past, we had the problem with a power vacuum. There was no president for a long period of time. And uh, that didn't change the, the situation. And the, uh, the, continue, the government continues to fail to deliver if there is a power vacuum or if there is no power vacuum. The problem is in Lebanon is that, that there is no national unity and national willpower to build a nation, a real nation that's supposed to serve its citizens. And that is what, uh, why the young generation took to the streets and uh, screamed loudly uh, one slogan. Uh, in Arabic, it's everybody. They were, they were fed up with everybody. I mean, and that created problems because some sectarian groups could not actually take that. Their sectarian leader was also included in that that everybody slogan. And, you know, the, the, this, this actually shows, uh, I think, uh, on one hand, there's a lot of optimism for the future because you can see the future generation refuses the sectarian system or a large part of it. On the other hand, it's problematic because these young people don't have a representative. They're just, and they don't want a representative. They don't want to actually form a new political party. They're just taking to the streets to actually, the majority of these people took to the street to actually scream out against the failure of the government and the corruption that is so widespread. Now, has there been any uh, intelligence forces and any external forces who manipulated the masses? I'm sure, I mean, that would be, that is the role of any security or intelligence force that is uh, wants to have a new role or a role in that, but that doesn't eliminate the actual call for the new generation for a better country that's based on democracy and away from the sectarian power division and away from the corruption because so much money has been ripped off. There's no place in the seaports around Beirut for to park a yacht. Mm. Uh, there are so many, there's a 10% the, of the population that is living a glamorous life with a, thanks to corruption and thanks to government corruption and the whole power sharing system and the apartments for sale for $10 million, whereas the rest of the people don't have right. money to actually, uh, you know, pay for schooling and basic uh, medical uh, health care. You know, and that's a very serious problem. And I think that is where I would like to focus on that issue. I'm, I'm in for all the actual political analysis. Yet right. I think the, the time now is to talk about these basic principles, basic issues that are the basic services of the government that are not being delivered. Naim Saleh, let me give you the last word because we're almost at the end of our show. Um, you know, as Omar said, it's, it's always been the same people that have ruled Lebanon, at least the same names, the Hariris uh, uh, and the others. Do you see things changing anytime soon? And also there's been, what about the prospect of new elections? That has been one of the main demands of the protesters. Would that resolve the crisis? Well, a new election will, will bring the same groups who have been controlling the power, will bring them back. Mm. Unless the election laws are changed, then that will change the correlation of forces in, in, in the country. And if the, those same groups who have been in the successive government in recent years and in recent decades, if they are to remain in power, there will be no reforms implemented in the country because those groups are the ones who have robbed the country of its resources. Corruption has become very much endemic in, in, in the country, pandemic all over the, the various strata of, of government. If we are to see the same groups, there is no optimistic uh, outlook for the country as far as reforms uh, are, are concerned. Unless uh, we go into a, a government of new groups uh, that neutralizes the old establishment and right. bring new faces into uh, the forefront of politics, then we will be having a real substantial reforms which will take us on, on the road to salvation from this whole mess which have been uh, into for many years now. Gentlemen, thank you very much for a very interesting discussion. I wish we had more time, but I'm sure we'll have the opportunity. Oh, We'll have the opportunity to do so in the coming days here on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much for being with us. Naim Salim, Bilal Maleb and Omar Nashib. And thank you for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation, of course, on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fully Batibo and the whole team, thank you for watching. Bye for now.